everyone and welcome to the 2022 virtual travel preview. My name is Lainey Crawford and I'm the manager of travel and young alumni. And my name is Matt Van Winkle, the visual content specialist here at the Alumni Association. We have a really fun hour ahead, don't we Lainey? Yes, we do. We're really excited to be uh, showing you all of these 2022 trips coming up yes. next year. We, we may be joined by our other cohort, Shelly Anderson. She is actually cheering on her daughter at State Soccer down in Des Moines. She is our Vice President of Business Development and Constituent Engagement. And a lot of you probably know Shelly, so she might be hopping on with us later, but her daughter did win at State Soccer. So yay, yay to the Nevada yes. Cubs to advancing on to the next round in State Soccer. So yes, Shelly might be joining us later uh, on. But thank you everyone for watching with us today. We wanna know, where you guys are watching from. Let us know in the comments where you're watching from today. And yeah, let us know in the comments. On YouTube, you got the chat feature. On Facebook, you got the chat feature as well. The comments, we're gonna pop those up on screen. Let us know where you're watching from. Also, if you went to school here at Iowa State, we'd love to know what years you were here. And we have an ISU travel prize pack for someone who comments here in the next few minutes. We'll, we'll do a random picking. Uh, all you have to do is comment. All you have to do is comment. No hashtags, no words, just anybody who comments you'll be entered in to win. So uh, get those comments in. We'll put some of those up on screen. Thanks, Matt. And thank you to everyone for tuning in live today. The event will be recorded. So for anyone um, who may miss it today, or if you want to send it on to family and friends, you can view it at a later time. Some of you may have attended this event in person in the past, and we usually hold that in the Alumni Center at the end of May. Last year, we did try a virtual format due to COVID-19, and we're trying it again this year to try to connect with cyclones everywhere. It truly has been a year like no other, nothing we've ever experienced. Our travel world was eerily quiet, but our phones are ringing again and reservations are coming in, and we're very excited about all of it. We know cyclones everywhere want to travel, and we want to travel with you. So we're excited to introduce our 2022 trips throughout this two-day virtual event. We kept a lot of our popular trips. We've also added quite a few bucket list trips, as well as some additional domestic offerings. There should be a trip for everyone to, to fulfill your travel desire and that you can get out there and travel again. The tour operators that you'll hear from today have been working feverishly to put your safety and security first and foremost. So as the world begins to open again, they'll be ready for you and to get you wherever you want to go. Let's see. So many of you have received our 2022 Traveling Cyclones catalog in the mail. If you haven't received that yet, we do still have some extras in-house. So you can let us know by filling out our brochure request form at www.isualum.org slash travel. That's scrolling across there on the bottom of the screen. And you can go to the request more information link and the catalog will be at the bottom of that form. Yes, absolutely. It's got everything you need to know at isulum.org slash travel. All the trips, uh, everything you need to know, that everything that you'll, you'll hear today as well will be found on that page. So, Definitely. And do we have some comments coming in, Matt? Should we... we do. We've got a lot of comments coming in. Uh, let's put some of the, those up on screen. we got Portland, Oregon representing here. Of course, people here in Ames, Iowa. Let's see. Oh, Mark, of course, now watching from Johnson. All right, Mark's a, a Colorado guy, but he must be back in Iowa. Got some people in Texas watching from us. Hello, Texas. More Texas. Look at that. More <laughs> Texas Cyclones. Nebraska representing as well. Let's see if we've got anyone else. Virginia. All right. Edwards watching. 1976 class. Very cool. Lots of people commenting. Um, wow. Do we want to thank? Uh, we want to thank our sponsor. We have a great sponsor here that's helping us put this on today as well, don't we, Lenny? Yes, we do. So Green Hills Retirement Community is located here in Ames, Iowa. And they are um, a very generous um, supporter of the Traveling Cyclones program and have been for quite a few years. So they are a, an event sponsor for this event, event, but also for our travel departure boxes. And so those are something that you get in the mail when you book a trip about a month ahead of time. And all of your, your goodies for your trip and your materials will come in that box, all sponsored by Green Hills Retirement Community. So we want to thank them for all of their support um, for this program as well as those departure boxes. Very cool. Thanks again to Green Hills for their great support of the travel program and the Iowa State Alumni Association. All right, Lainey, why don't we pick one of our winners? I think we've got, let's see, let's pull up our screen here. 30 people have entered. All right. 
We're going to pick our first winner. We will also be doing one more drawing later on in the hour. So here we go. Let's see who our winner is. We've got this fun prize pick picking tool here that we got to pick all these great comments from. Who's our winner? John Kinley. Congratulations, John, watching on YouTube. Um, Lainey will be in touch with you about receiving your prize pack uh, at the end of this program. Congratulations, John. Yeah, congratulations, John. All right. So we are going to move into our first uh, tour operator, and it's time to talk about some of our upcoming trips. So if you have a question while the operator is presenting, please type it in the chat or comments section, and we'll get to them at the end of their presentation and make sure that your question's answered. So our first tour operator to present is Bobby Bingle, Director of Sales at Thomas P. Gohagen & Company. Bobby has held various roles with the company and has had the opportunity to work directly with alumni travelers and alumni associations. As a past travel director, he fondly remembers sharing a pint in Dublin with traveling cyclones. With insight provided by more than 35 years of experience, Gohagen & Company continues to specialize in exclusive itineraries, academic enhancements, world-class guides, and full charters of five-star ships. We've had a long-standing working partnership with Gohagen since 1996, providing travel experiences all around the globe. Thanks for taking the time to talk with us today, Bobby. Oops, it sounds like we can't hear you, Bobby. Bobby, we can't hear you. Maybe fix your audio settings. We'll bring you back on here in a sec. All right. Yeah, we got nice. you, Bobby. You got me now? We got yes, you. Yes, do. All right, wonderful. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for Iowa State, Laney, Matt, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, for having me here. Um, you know, I, I wish I was I was there in, in person, but I think we're getting close to that. And it's always a pleasure to uh, to get to, to talk travel, and especially nowadays, since it's been such a long time uh, that we have seen an actual uh, encouraging signs. And I think I think we're getting there. So I'm going to talk to you about five different programs that Go Hagen and Company is going to be offering with Iowa State. Um, it's a nice mixture of time of year, style of program, and I'll tell you a little bit about our company um, ahead of that. And so I'm going to now try to share my screen here. Here we go. All right. Are we good, Laney? Let's see. Yep, looks like it's there. All right, wonderful. Okay, um, and yeah. So as Laney had mentioned, or Matt, I think um, had mentioned, I was a travel director in a former um, role with the company. I've traveled with Iowa State alumni before. I'm a basketball guy, so most of the conversations somehow come back to Fred Hoiberg or Marcus Pfizer or something like that. Um, and so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the itineraries, about the company. And I know, you know, there is a bit of a time uh, frame I have here, so I won't dive in as much because as Lainey can attest to, once I get going, I can go for hours about these trips. So I'm going to focus on some of the highlights and, and hopefully get you thinking about some destinations to look at for 2022. So that's, of course, a picture of Santorini there. So the Greek Isles that we'll be offering later in the fall. I'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, so for those of you not familiar with Gohagen uh, and company, we've partnered with Iowa State for you know decades plus now. We operate solely in the affinity market, small group educational travel. So we are alumni exclusive. Um, we don't go out to the general markets so when you're on a trip with us. Uh, you're just traveling with other like-minded travelers looking for that in-depth educational experience. Uh, by proxy of that, we focus on uh, enriching itineraries with a little bit of an academic slant. We have lecture series throughout where professors for the various universities join us. We have guides who are oftentimes PhD level and teachers in their own right at, at the various sites we visit. So they're very... Uh, knowledgeable. Um, the trips I'm going to talk about today are all feature a ship. And one thing we do do that uh, is part of our business model is that we fully charter ships. That gives us the opportunity to create unique itineraries specific only to our company. It allows us to shift course if there's anything 
uh, with weather. It allows us to work with these ship companies to really get the most out of the itineraries that we create. Uh, and I think the five trips I'm going to talk about kind of give a good feel for, for all of that. The health and safety. So this is the big thing as we return to travel. And one thing I can tell you from within the industry, and I'm sure you're seeing as you uh, read in publications yourself, is that things change daily, uh, weekly, monthly, but now daily. And as the world reopens, we are seeing encouraging signs. Many of some of these countries that you'll see on our uh, these these next trips have been open already. Some are going to be opening shortly. Um, and we're really committed with our local ground operators with these ships to create the safest possible experience following all the necessary guidelines, um, but then also remaining true to the integrity of the itinerary. We're not going to run an oper or run or operate a trip if you know we can't see half of the sites due to them being closed, et cetera. So we really are are guaranteeing that we're going to honor the itinerary and excited to, to get back into it. So with that, I'm going to uh, jump into our first trip. So this is neat. So this is a uh, Tahiti and French Polynesia and we do it under sail. So there's some big ships, I think that will we'll go out there, but we find that we like to do it under sail on a ship called the Wind Spirit. We operated at about 125 people or so. And uh, the dates are going to be, um, are May 5th to 15th, and we have a Morea post tour extension. Um, so you can see on the map there, we do hit a number of the various islands of that portion of French Polynesia. Um, and I'll kind of show you the little bit more of the itinerary here. And this is a good example of a trip where we try to combine the leisure, the beautiful ecological outdoor aspects of this region, which are so rich, the biodiversity, um, you know, the not only the ecology, but the, the this incredible geology, as you can see there, where you have this mixture of uh, mountainous uh, peaks there with these uh, incredible valleys and bays and things of that nature. Also with a historical cultural element. I mean, it's extremely rich uh, to go from the original Polynesians who had moved into this area and still have such a rich culture and presence there. You know, when we go to the Marais and Morea, um, you know, in Riate, we see some of the uh, first kind of settlements of these Polynesian individuals who came over. And then, of course, as we moved on into the 16th, 17th century and you get more of the colonial presence, you get the explorers who went there. Um, you have the, the famous Captain Cook who spent a lot of time there. And we visit some of these sites. We visit a pearl farm in, in Riate. Um, and then in that, at that extension in the end, Morea would be kind of what you see out of the, uh, the magazines where you're in a bungalow over the water, just completely enjoying it. So a really nice mixture and uh, a, a good concept of how we can kind of marry the educational, cultural, which is unadulterated beach time and swimming in this really remarkable area. Again, it's uh, on the Windstar. It's uh, fully inclusive, 120 people or so, all excursions included for all of our trips for that matter. Um, and really a wonderful trip and a wonderful time of year to be there. It's right at the beginning of kind of the drier season where it's not as humid. Uh, and we're really excited to get that one going again next year. Next, we have one of our classic programs. It's called the Celtic Lands featuring uh, David Eisenhower, uh, who joins us on the beaches of Normandy, where we'll spend two full days going around the beaches into the cemetery. But then on to some of these uh, really kind of a little bit more off the beaten path parts of the United Kingdom, as well as some mainstays like Dublin. And I'll kind of show the itinerary there. Um, so you can see David in the bottom uh, right-hand corner, and that's his wife, Julie Nixon, um, who is also a, uh, a wonderful resource for us to have, incredibly knowledgeable, does not shy away from her father or his legacy, and uh, really is a, a, a great positive of the trip uh, as well. So we begin right off the bat getting into the beaches of Normandy, where we Go to Kain. Um, before I, I'm sorry, I didn't, let me touch on the ship a little bit. Uh, the ship is called De Mont de Vie. It's a, a company called Ponant. They're a French company. We've been using them for 10 years or so now. But, uh, we're the largest charter of them. We operated at about 150 people, 100% um, balcony. Everything's included, all meals, open bar. And again, all of our excursions are included. And it's really a five star, uh, luxurious experience. We continue uh, to go then into France, into the beaches of Normandy. We go to Aramash and Omaha Beach right off the bat. David leads us to both of those. 
Next, we go to Schreberg, where we're able to go to Utah Beach, uh, Point to Hawk, where you can see the, uh, the German kind of turrets and things of that nature and get a perspective of what it was like to have to come up from the beaches. Um, and then we do a, a, a wreath layering ceremony at the U.S. Cemetery led by David. And it's a, a very poignant um, experience and it's, uh, it, it's, it's a remarkable experience. And David really brings it all to life with his lectures and, uh, there with us. Then we move on into the U.K. We go to Trestle for the Isles of Scilly, which is kind of the new off the beaten path southern tip of England. A lot of people don't get down to with these beautiful gardens and coastlines. In Hollyhead, we go to Caffernan Castle and we go see a Welsh choir. And again, you're right on the water the whole time to get that Welsh experience. Dublin, you know, you can't beat it. Trinity College, Pine of Guinness, uh, Book of Kells. Uh, we spend a full day there. We don't leave until about 1 a.m. So plenty of time to, to enjoy the revelry that is Dublin. And then finally, we finish off with the uh, Scottish Isles and Scottish Highlands. We're up at the Isle of Mull and Isle of Iona and the Isle of Lacoche. We're going in and out and making our way through these various lock systems. And, you know, you feel like you're transported back into the 1700s. It's just, you can't beat it. It's wonderful. The Great Journey Through Europe. Uh, this is our classic summer program. And hey, Bobby. Bobby, I'm yes. going to jump in real quick. Uh, on yeah. the bottom of your screen, there's a little button you can click that says hide. It's just covering the dates on your uh, the trips. Oh, so we just want to be able to say, there we you. go. Great, Excellent. Great. Thanks Thank for doing you. that. Yeah, no, absolutely. That helps me, too, because I just have to look at my notes. All right. Uh, the Great Journey Through Europe. So this is neat because it's a land, river, train, a little bit of everything. There's uh, some of the three most well-known train cog wheel systems in Europe going through the Alps that we experience, And um, it, it touches on a little bit of everything. And uh, we've tweaked it over the years, but we've operated some form of this for a while because uh, you really get the full on kind of this portion of Europe and, and all the modes of travel. So June 19th, 29th with an Amsterdam post tour extension. So we begin in Geneva and head straight to Zermatt. Zermatt would be this uh, idyllic little ski village right at the base of the Matterhorn. So right off the bat, first day, you're in the Matterhorn, right in the heart of the Alps. And uh, as you can see, there's a great Gornerbahn train that takes you up there. It's five levels, and you can go all the way to the top and hike down. Um, so right from there, Zermatt. And then we continue on for Lucerne. And by way of the Glacier Express, so I'll go back here. That's the Glacier Express, that picture over kind of the – these famous Roman aqueducts that go through the Alps and uh, right again in the heart of the whole mountain range on our way to Lucerne. Lucerne is that top left picture where it's Lake Lucerne. So we stay right on the lake, an old hotel called the Schwarz Schweitzerhof, um, where all sorts of, you know, luminary figures have stayed from Mark Twain to Nabokov to Keith Richards. So I don't think he remembers it. Um, but in any event, it's right there on the lake. And then we spend a day out at Mapuatus, where in the bottom left-hand corner, you'll see we go on the steepest cogwheel train in the world up to Mount Pilatus, then down by the river. Um, so that's our land portion. And then from there, we begin our cruise up the Rhine River to eventually get to Amsterdam. Uh, and we start, we go to Bern for a day in the bottom right-hand corner, and then embark in Basel. From there, we kind of, we make our way up north. We go to Strasbourg, so we kind of go to the island town that's right in the middle of Germany, but Strasbourg itself, uh, you know, uh, canal on all sides is part of France, um, and a remarkable, beautiful little town that you see there in the bottom left. In Mannheim, we go to Heidelberg for the Heidelberg Castle. Uh, we make our way through the, uh, the Warlike Passage, the uh, Rudesheim and Koblenz for, for the German dessert wines, Koblenz for kind of the neo-Gothic architecture and uh, kind of see the, the confluence of the Moselle and the Rhine River. And then finally, we finish in Cologne. So we see the famous cathedral there in kind of a dramatic way to finish the trip before going to Amsterdam. I'm going to check myself for time. I think I'm doing okay. Um, so our next trip in the summer will be our circumnavigation of Iceland. So this is aboard the Le Bello. So it's the sister ship to uh, the previous ship I had just spoken about in it, that we go to the UK and Normandy with. So again, about 150 people all inclusive. Um, and our trip to Iceland is great because there's a lot of people who are going to Iceland nowadays and they'll go to Reykjavik in the Reykjavik area, maybe the Golden Circle area. I've even heard of bachelor parties, bachelorette parties going there for three days and it kind of blows my mind, but in any event, um, though the southwestern portion is quite beautiful, 
you're missing out on so much of the country, uh, this incredible island nation, where we're able to do on this small ship, really get into the nooks and crannies of it. And as we look at, at, at the itinerary itself, so we make a circular navigation beginning by going kind of south, uh, excuse me, northwest, and then make our way around uh, the island. We get a combination of these old fishing villages, uh, the herring kind of scene, the whaling scene in Sigurd and uh, Sadis Fjorda. But then we get out into the center of the uh, of the country for what I would say is the most geologically remarkable place I've ever seen because it has glaciers, it has waterfalls, it has geothermal springs, it has sulfuric um, geysers. It's it's just it's incredible, and it's all part of the, this same island nation. Um, and then we finish a kind of a neat place where you see in the top left there, a place called Jaime, which is right past Surtsey, which was a uh, uh, near the volcanic eruption that kind of shut down all of European travel, if you remember, a couple of summers ago. Um, so don't worry, you can go there now. I think it's got another 100 years before it uh, erupts again. So next summer, it'll be perfect, trust me. Um, and then our final trip is the Island Life Ancient Greece trip. And this is one of our, my favorites because we have a it's like our, our travel, our Greek travel family down there. We've been working with the, the people down there in Patmos and Rhodos and Santorini for decades and they come on board and it's really just this familial uh, trip. And what's really, and it's October 8 to 16 with an Athens pre-tour and a Delphi post-tour. Um, what's great about this is, is doing it by small ship. So again, it'll be on a sister ship to the other Ponat vessels I had mentioned. And this allows us to get beyond just the Santorini's, the Mykonos's, those kind of things, uh, and, and put together a very unique itinerary that I'll kind of dive into a little bit here. So right off the bat, before going south into the uh, into the Greek Isles, we go up to Volos for Meteora, which are these hanging uh, cliffs on the north northern part of, of the Isles, kind of on the, the eastern coast of the uh, uh, southern Greece. Um, from there, we go to Delos, and Delos is on the bottom right-hand corner. You can see that would be the site of the Dalian League. There's a Temple of Apollo there. Those are his lions, I believe they were, kind of guarding the island. And we're there before the ferries come over from uh, from Mykonos. So we have the island basically to ourselves for the first few hours, and that's where you really feel being on this small kind of exclusive ship. From Mykonos, then we get into some of the kind of the neater islands that are a little bit tougher to get to, Patmos and Rhodos. So Rhodes, obviously the, the site of the historic uh, legend, I should say, of the Colossus of Rhodes, but have these beautiful kind of art galleries there. Patmos, we go for the, the Cave of the Apocalypse, where we can see where, uh, you know, they say that uh, St. John wrote the Revelation. And there's just these beautiful little towns, and you can go in the afternoon, go for a swim or you know, just hang out and get some fish, have a little ouzo. It's great. You can't beat it, you know. And then Lindos. So the Acropolis of Lindos is that middle picture where you're looking down over the sea. And finally, we finish with Santorini, which you have to go to. You know, if you're going to be in that area, you really have to experience Santorini and the Bronze Age site of Akrotiri. And then finally, finishing in Epidaurus for my scene. So, uh, you know, seeing sites of going back 5,000 years that are well kept. Um, on that portion of the Greek Isles, and finishing in Athens. And I think I uh, am right about time for my presentation, but I believe we can take questions if there are any, or happy to kind of extrapolate on any parts of the itineraries. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen here. Yeah, now that thank you so much, Bobby. We appreciate. Um, all of the presentation you gave on the, the five trips that Go Higgin is doing for 2022. We did have a couple questions come in. We do have one person who um, was booked on a trip in 2020 and wanted to know how they can apply their voucher to their 2022 trip. Sure. So, um, so we had various individuals who were on trips with us for 2020 or maybe uh, time early 2021 where we weren't able to operate. If you have any travel certificates with us, um, you, I would just say reach out to us. Um, we'll, we will have our number on uh, on our website. We also have a an email account at reservationservices at gohagentravel.com. We can give you the full listing of those five trips to Iowa State, but we also have a full slate of other destinations across the year, uh, and we'll be happy to welcome you on any one of them. So I would say the best thing is just to give us a ring, connect with us, and then we can 
you know, get you in the right direction and provide you all the trips for your, for your reference. Nice. And then another one from Nancy is do ships, do the ships have bikes? So the, the sailing vessel in Tahiti, no. The Ponant vessels do have a few bikes that uh, can be used. The other thing is that we have a full team of Gohagen travel directors on every one of our trips, so at least three to four of them. And in any location you want, we can certainly arrange to get you a bike. We can uh, help you find a hiking trail if you're, if you're kind of into that. Uh, in addition to our included excursions, we always build in quite a bit of free time to just explore. And uh, that's where we're there for you 24 hours a day. We have Go Hagen professionals with you. Perfect. And then we did have someone ask about how to receive a Go Hagen brochure, and those have not gone out for 2022, right? No, and actually, we're just. Um, Vamping up our, our brochure production um, as we speak. I actually was in a meeting about that earlier today, and we're going to have our whole first, second quarter brochures hopefully completed here in the next few weeks, and we'll have um, them electronically available to you, uh, where we can just shoot you an email with the PDFs of any of the trips you're interested to, we can value them. But here, um, we're moving now very quickly on them to get the official brochures done, and so. Just check in with us or check in with Laney and the Iowa State team. and We'll make sure once they're ready, we'll get them to you. And it looks like the last question, what are the dates for the Celtic lands trip? Sure. And so they would be May 11th to 20th. So you'd be beginning in France. Um, and then we have a Paris pre-tour extension and then finishing uh, in Glasgow and then in Edinburgh post-tour. Uh, so May 11th to 20th. And each of the extensions are two extra days on either. Perfect. And then we did have one more come in. Does the Great Journey Tour include Amsterdam or only a place to disembark the boat? Sure. So we do do a half day morning in Amsterdam for um, a canal tour. So we do go through the canal system and then we have an extension there as well. Um, or if we disembark and use a canal and you decide to stay a few extra nights on your own, we've got our, our team there who, you know, we've got three or four people who live there who are happy to help with any suggestions or anything like that. So we do a canal cruise and then uh, there is an extension. Perfect. Okay, um, we do have a couple gift certificates to give away from Go Hagen. So we will start with our first winner for a $500 gift certificate towards a future Go Hagen and Company trip. And this one is going to Susan Jett of Sugarland, Texas. She graduated in 1970 in dietetics and is a life member of the Alumni Association. So congratulations to Susan. Congratulations, Susan. Let's do one more giveaway. This one's for $500 travel certificate for a future Go Hagen and Co trip. The second winner is Catherine Miller of Bettendorf, Iowa. Catherine graduated in 1981 in child development and is also a life member. Laney will be in contact with the winners after the event. All right, Bobby, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Some really cool trips. Yeah, Matt, Laney, thanks so much. Thanks to the Iowa State team. And thank you all, Iowa State travelers. Hope to uh, see you next year at campus. And uh, yeah, look forward to hopefully maybe seeing you on some trips. Perfect. Thanks, Great. Bobby. Thanks, Bobby. Awesome. Great questions too by people. Um, and if we didn't get to any of the questions, we will make sure and respond to those um, in the comments after the event today. So if your question doesn't get answered live, uh, we'll make sure and get that answered for you after today's event. All right. We do have a very special guest joining us today who couldn't join us earlier. We did talk about them, but we're going to bring her back on. Bailey Upton from Green Hills. Hi, Bailey. Hi, how's everyone doing? We're doing great. We're here at Ames, Iowa. You're just right I, down the road from us here. We are. So I am the marketing coordinator at Green Hills, and we are located just south of Highway 30, right next to the Gateway. Um, and if anyone's not familiar with Green Hills, we are a 55 plus life plan community. Um, we offer the continuum of care from independent living to healthcare, assisted living, you name it, and we probably have it on campus. And we just want to send a huge shout out to the Alumni Association and thank you for letting us be a sponsor and um, having a wonderful partnership with you all throughout the years. And we are so excited to start traveling again. All right. Bailey, thanks so much for joining us. Lane, you got anything for Bailey before we let her go? 
No, we appreciate you taking the time. Um, and as I said before, we couldn't do um, this event and a lot of our extra traveling cyclones opportunities yes. without Green Hills, just like those departure boxes. So yes. if you want one, you'll have to get signed up for a trip and you'll get it about a month before your trip leaves. All right, let's introduce our next uh, tour operator. How about that, Lainey? Yes, definitely. So our next tour operator is uh, Odysseys Unlimited. And so Vinny Guarna is um, the tour operator or the representative from Odysseys Unlimited talking today. He has been in the travel industry for 27 years, 13 of which have been at Odysseys. With a background in customer service operations and nonprofit management, Vinny has worked to develop the special interest groups division of Odysseys, which currently has a client roster that includes more than 75 of the country's alumni associations, museums, and other nonprofit institutions. For over 20 years, Odysseys Unlimited has been a leader in high quality small group travel. By limiting tours to just 12 to 24 guests, the company provides an intimate, authentic travel experience with a high level of personal service. Iowa State has been offering Odysseys tours since 2003. So thank you for joining us today, Benny. My pleasure, Lainey. It's great to see you. My thanks to you and to Matt and Shelly for hosting this event. And a big hello to all the traveling cyclones. Again, I'm Vinny Guarna from Odysseys Unlimited. It's a really great pleasure to be here today. As Bobby mentioned in the previous presentation, you know, hopefully we can get back together uh, next year, but this is the next best thing. Um, so we've been, as Lainey uh, has said, we've been working with ISU since 2003, bringing alum to all corners of the globe um, for those nearly 20, or actually about 18 years. Um, and we really look forward to getting back out on the road in 2022. Um, so for those of you who have traveled with Odysseys and know a little bit about our brand, thank you very much. We appreciate your patronage. And for those of you who haven't traveled with Odysseys, I'd just like to give you a brief overview of the company. So Odysseys has been in business for about 22 years. And we're located just west of Boston, and we're a motor coach tour operator specializing in small group travel of 12 to 24 guests. Now, if you were just to take away one thing from my presentation today, just remember Odysseys is small group travel. We like to provide a very intimate sort of travel. But besides that, we also feature some of the best tour directors in the industry, all nationals of their country, providing you with their insider's perspective of their country. We feature first class to deluxe accommodations. We use some chain properties, but we use many smaller boutique style hotels that only cater to small groups. Our tours also feature extensive sightseeing. Entrance fees are included in the tour cost. And all of your transportation is included, beginning with the international round trip flights from your city in the States all the way to the destination. And then within the country, we include all your transportation prices, whether it's by motor coach, rail, boat, or airplane. So that all of that in mind is, is what we're about in terms of small group travel. So as we are beginning to reemerge out of our year of isolation, I know many people are itching to get back out on the road, as are we. We want to do it safely, and we're very cautiously optimistic about what's occurring. Um, so today, I'm pleased to be here to present 10 small group trips for your consideration. And then following uh, the presentation of the trips, I'll briefly cover the health and safety protocols uh, and then any questions you might have. So Lainey, if we could go uh, to the second slide, I think the first slide is the Odyssey's logo and the first slide will be our first trip. One second, Vinny. Um, not, I, not a problem, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm advancing it, but it's not showing up on the screen. So I will get that for you. And Vinny, I know that we did have one question that came in ahead of time mm -hmm. um, of someone who was wondering if these trips are exclusive to Iowa State travelers or not. And I know that Odysseys is probably the only tour operator we work with that some of those trips are just uh, our group from Iowa State, right? Right. Yeah, that's correct. Um, for instance, I'll give you an example of the 10 trips. The first one is New Zealand. That will be an exclusive Iowa State trip. 
Uh, Tanzania is exclusive. On Safari, Safaris, we limit the number to 18 travelers. So that one is exclusive. Um, Insiders Japan um, at this time, I believe, is exclusive to Iowa State. Enchanting Ireland is exclusive. Norwegian Splendor um, will be a share with University of Illinois. Provincial French Countryside is a share with the University of Minnesota. Alaska will be exclusive to Iowa State. Machu Picchu to the Galapagos, Iowa State exclusive. Discovering Eastern Europe uh, will be a share with University of Southern California. And the last trip, Egypt, is an exclusive Iowa State. So it's a mix, but mostly, mostly exclusives. Oh, great. Okay. So let us begin with our first trip called New Zealand Adventure. January the 27th through February 11th. This trip is 16 days. We're covering both the North and the South Island. Some of you may know New Zealand has some of the most uh, pristine and beautiful mountain scenery in the entire world, as well as being an active, uh, ge geologically active country. So the trip begins with a two night stay in Auckland on the North Island. It's um, New Zealand's largest city. Um, it's also called the City of Sails and home to the America's Cup. We'll have a harbor cruise enjoying the vistas of Auckland. And then you'll motor coach down to Rotorua. Again, probably one of the more geologically active areas of New Zealand with the hot steaming springs, the bubbling mud pits, and the geysers. So we'll be on, on hand to view those things, um, as well as learning about the Maori culture and participating in one of their traditional dinners. From Rotorua, we head down to Napier for a one night stay on this coastal town. It's also known for its Art Deco architecture, probably one of those cities uh, that many people would associate with Art Deco. From Napier, we head down to the south coast of the northern um, part of the island in Wellington, the capital of New Zealand. Uh, before we get there, we'll stop at a sheep farm to watch a sheep shearing demonstration. Sheep outnumber the people in New Zealand. There are sheep everywhere. But then once we reach Wellington, we'll take a cable car ride up to the summit for the fantastic views of the city below and the coastline. And then departing the North Island, you'll take a short flight down to the South Island, landing in Christchurch. Christchurch was nearly destroyed in 2011 from a massive earthquake. And over the past 10 years, they've been rebuilding the city. So you'll see the effects of this renovation over the past 10 years. It's also an English accented city with many green pastures within the, uh, within the city. From Christchurch, you'll then board the Transalpine train heading west to the, Fran to the town of Franz Joseph. And while you're passing, you'll be going through pristine mountain valleys and glaciers and waterfalls. Then once you reach Franz Joseph, you'll spend two nights there. You'll do a hike along one of the glaciers that spans all the way from the mountainous region all the way down to the Rainforest Valley. Finally, from Franz Joseph, you motor coach down to Queenstown for a three night stay. Queenstown is considered the adventure capital of New Zealand, probably of the world. It's where bungee jumping originated. But you'll have a day cruising along the serene, um, doubtful sound, taking in all the beautiful scenery. And then you'll also have a day on your own to um, enjoy the day as you wish, maybe trying some outdoor activities, including fishing or walking, um, you know, walking along the beautiful coast. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the lakes. Um, and then we fly home from Queenstown. So this trip is available at a cost of $6,774, air inclusive from the States. That's based on double occupancy. And I know that one of the questions Lainey took before the presentation was, is New Zealand open to US citizens? And the answer to that right now, no, it's not open. Um, but we are hopeful. Um, and anticipating that as the situation around the globe continues to improve, that by this fall, New Zealand, as well as Australia, will begin opening their borders. So, Lainey, if we can go to the next trip. Thank you. We have a classic safari called Tanzania Adventure. The dates are February the 6th through the 19th. This is 14 days. We limit the number to 18 travelers in total because we're using small safari vehicles, six guests per vehicle. 
and each guest is guaranteed to have their own window seat. Now, if you've never been on a safari, a typical safari day looks like this. You have an early morning wake-up call, 5 or 5.30. I know it's early, but animals are most active in the morning. You'll have um, tea, coffee, a light breakfast, and then you head out on your safari vehicles for the next several hours. Um, returning back to the lodge around 10.30, 11 a.m., You'll then have some lunch and then be able to rest and relax using the amenities of the lodge as well as the pool. And then late afternoon, you head back out in the late afternoon and early evening for an evening safari, again, when the animals are most active again at dusk. So this trip um, begins in the city of Arusha, where we'll visit the national park with lots of giraffe there. And if the day is clear, you'll have spectacular views of Mount Kilimanjaro, Africa's highest peak, snow-covered peak. From Arusha, you'll be in your safari vehicles, traveling a few hours down to Tarangiri National Park, spending a couple of nights there. Tarangiri is known for its high concentration of elephants. And then from there, you head north in your safari vehicles up to Ngorongoro Crater. Ngorongoro Crater, um, well, let me start by saying your lodge sits on the rim of the crater up at the top. So your views are down at the crater below. It's one of the world's largest volcanic calderas. And down below, you have a microcosm of grasslands and forests and lakes and swamps and over 100 square miles where you'll potentially see the big five, the lions, leopards, elephants, Cape buffalo, and rhino. From Ngorongoro Crater, you then head up to the Serengeti. And this is where the classic safari experience, where you see all the pictures um, on all the wildlife shows. You know, you see the endless plains and the acacia trees dotting the landscape. This is where you see the lions and the cheetahs hunt down their prey. We'll be spending three nights there in some really incredible accommodations. And then finishing up in the Serengeti and your safari experience will then fly you down to the east coast of Tanzania on the island of Zanzibar for a two night stay in a beautiful hotel overlooking the Indian Ocean where you can rest, relax, uh, reminisce about your safari experience and also do some touring. Uh, the island is known as the Spice Island. So this trip is 7397 air inclusive. And the next slide please. Thank you. Now we head over to Japan, Insiders Japan, April the 9th through the 21st. This program is 13 days. It features the modern and the ancient. The tour begins in the capital city of Tokyo for a three night stay. We include touring, visiting the Tokyo National Museum, housing some important Asian collections, as well as visiting the modern Ginza district. That's Japan's version of Times Square. And then we'll take you down to see Meiji Shrine um, with the beautiful manicured gardens. We'll also take you to one of the preeminent calligrapher, calligraphers where you'll learn about the ancient art of calligraphy. Following Tokyo, you'll motor coach down to Hakone. Hakone is home to Mount Fuji National Park. Mount Fuji being one of the most perfectly symmetrical dormant volcanoes in the entire world. While there, we'll visit the World Heritage Center where you'll learn about the history of the mountain um, from uh, its people as well as its paintings. You'll also spend the night in Kakone in a ryokan. That's a traditional Japanese hotel where upon arrival, you're given a kimono-like robe. You partake in a 10-part kaisake dinner and your room has minimalist design where you'll be able just to enjoy the beauty of the area and rest comfortably on a futon. Many local Japanese spend their weekends at these ryokans, so we thought our guests would really enjoy this very authentic experience staying at a ryokan. Following Hakone, you then board the famous bullet train traveling at 183 miles an hour, bringing you up into the Japanese Alps and to the ancient town of Takayama. Takayama is known for its sake breweries, its small inns and tea houses. You'll also see remnants of many of the 15th century architecture of the original wood. Uh, I remember being there several years ago and it's like stepping back in time. You'll also enjoy a cooking class with a local chef there. And then from Takayama, you'll motor coach north about two hours to the town of Kanazawa. Kanazawa is very close to the Sea of Japan. 
And it also was spared destruction uh, during World War II, so many of the sites are still intact. Kanazawa is a modern town, but also features many old, beautiful uh, sites, including Ken Rukoan Gardens. We'll take you also uh, to learn about the ancient craft of gold leaf design. From Kanazawa, your last journey on another train, not the bullet train, but a very comfortable train called the Thunderbird Express will be about three hours south to Kyoto. Kyoto is considered Japan's cultural heart. It contains, someone has said, 1600 temples, shrines, and castles. We'll take you to the ba ancient bamboo grove. You'll see and visit Nijo Castle. You'll also take part in a tea, um, a tea ceremony and then we will also uh, take you to the Temple of the Golden Pavilion. And for those who wish, we also have an optional post-tour extension to see Hiroshima and the City of Peace. And this trip is 6384 Air Inclusive. Thank you. All right, now we're back in Europe and the Emerald Isle. The tour is called Enchanting Ireland, May the 1st through the 13th. This program is 13 days. Luckily, Ireland is not a large island, so the distances covered are not very long. For example, Dublin over to Galway is only about a three-hour drive. But we start the trip in Dublin with a two-night stay. You'll visit St. Patrick's Cathedral. You'll see the Book of Kells at Trinity College. You'll have some free time on your own, maybe go on a literary pub crawl. And then departing Dublin, you'll head west, first stopping in an ancient monastic settlement, and then you reach Galway. Galway will be your home for the next three nights. One of the days, you'll be going up to Connemara um, to uh, visit Kylemore Abbey, pictured there in the top left. And then on another day, you'll take a day-long ferry, or I should say, you'll take a ferry ride for a day-long excursion out to Inishmore, one of the largest of the Aran Islands, where you'll view and visit some of the ancient Celtic settlements. Departing Galway, you head south. You'll stop at the famous Cliffs of Moor with the 700-foot drops into the Atlantic Ocean. And then you reach Kilcarney, uh, Killarney excuse me, uh, for a three-night stay. Using this as your base, one of the days you'll visit an Elizabethan-style manor home, and then on another day you'll take a full-day excursion out to the famous Ring of Kerry. This is the Ireland of postcards with the different shades of green dotting the landscape, rainbows appearing in and out of the sky, small quaint villages and waterfalls. Departing Killarney, you head back east, stopping at the famous Blarney Castle, hoping to get the gift of gab. And then you make a stop and visit at the Rock of Cashel, pictured there in the top right. That's the home of the ancient kings of Ireland. And then we reach Kilkenny for a two-night stay with its small, quaint village and known for its pretty castles, uh, in, uh, known for its uh, prettiest castles uh, in all of Ireland. Finally, we head up back to Dublin for one night, um, a one night stay, and we actually stay in a castle resort outside of Dublin before heading home. And then um, for those who wish, we have an optional post-tour extension to Northern Ireland to visit the town of Belfast, as well as tour along the Antrim coast to see the Giant's Causeway. And this trip is 5,192 air inclusive. Okay, now we are going to experience a very comprehensive overview of Scandinavia. This trip is called Norwegian Splendor, May 16 through 31. It's a 16-day program. It begins in Copenhagen, capital of Denmark. You'll visit and tour Tivoli Gardens. We'll take you to see the Little Mermaid statue. You'll visit Rosenberg Palace, as well as Elsinore with Kronberg Castle. Um, that's the setting for uh, Shakespeare's Hamlet. Following Copenhagen, you'll board an overnight ferry bound for Norway. Once you reach Oslo, Norway, you'll be in Norway for the next 10 nights. So you'll head up to Gala and stop at Lillehammer, visiting the village um, where the 1994 Winter Olympics took place. You'll then head west to the Western Fjord District, spending two nights in Garanger for some of the most beautiful Ford uh, fjord uh, viewings in the entire world, pictured there in the top right. From Granger, you motor coach south to Bergen. Bergen is um, Norway's second largest city with its lively and colorful merchant quarter as well as fish market. From Bergen, you head down to Loftus, 
um, with its beautiful waterfalls. You also visit a salmon farm. And then departing Loftus en route to Oslo, you'll board what's called the Flam Railway, and you'll enjoy a thrilling and exciting train ride spiraling in and out of mountain passes and hairpin turns with just spectacular views of the valley below. Finally, you'll be reaching Oslo for your final three-night stay touring the Viking Ship Museum with um, uh, an actual Viking ship from, I believe, about a thousand years ago. You'll tour the Viglan Sculpture Park as well as Kontiki Museum. If you'd like and to continue your Scandinavian excursion, we have an optional tour to Stockholm. You know, visiting these three countries, this will give you a very comprehensive overview of Scandinavia. And this trip is $59.94 here inclusive. The next trip, Provincial French Countryside, is a trip we've been operating for nearly 20 years. Um, the dates are June 6th through the 20th, it's uh, 15 days. We're focusing on the western half of France. Um, we begin in the southern city of Toulouse. This is home to the bel epic artist Henri um, Toulouse-Lautrec. We'll visit the museum housing his 19th century posters. On another day, we'll take you down to the Languedoc region um, to visit the town and the city walls of Carcassonne, pictured there in the top left with Europe's oldest city walls. You'll then head north into the Dordogne River, uh, the Dordogne region, excuse me. You'll cruise along the Dordogne. Uh, you'll spend three nights in Sarlat, a beautiful medieval village. Um, we'll take you um, on a tour to Le Commodore um, with some really quaint villages, uh, villages that sit um, precariously on some lime rock cliff faces. And then we'll also take you to see the prehistoric cave paintings. They're, they're actual replicas though, uh, because we can't go into the actual uh, Les Cow caves um, due to the humidity levels. Um, so we'll take you to a replica to see those uh, prehistoric cave paintings. But then from Sarlat, you then depart the Dordogne region and you head north into Lo the Loire Valley. This is the area known for wine and chateaus. We'll be spending three nights in the town of Samor in an 18th century mansion right on the banks of the Loire River. While there, you'll do some wine tasting and we'll take you to visit Chenin Show, which is a Renaissance masterpiece, one of the greatest of the, um, one of the, greatest of the chateaus in that region. Leaving the Loire Valley, you'll then head north into Normandy, spending three nights in Crepon. And the three nights will be spent in an absolutely unique um, property. Um, and it's a 13th century restored rustic farmhouse. That in itself um, is a really special experience. But while there, you'll spend a day and a half um, touring the D-Day landing beaches, uh, including the American Cemetery. Uh, and then heading east to Paris, we'll first stop in um, Givernay to visit Monet's home and gardens. And then finally reaching Paris, the city of lights, where you'll have a panoramic city tour and a visit out to the Louvre. And then we have an optional post tour extension uh, in Paris to explore Paris for a couple of days on your own. And this trip is $55.97. Next is a trip that's uh, new um, that we're offering. It's only a couple of years old, but it's the first time we'll be offering it to ISU. It's called Untamed Alaska, July the 15th through the 25th, 11 days. You're visiting some of the most pristine wilderness and mountain scenery in the entire world. We visit some areas like Anchorage and Denali, which you can see on, on many cruises. But what's special about this trip is that we get to some really remote regions, uh, including Wrangell St. Elias National Park, which are only accessible by small planes. So this trip begins um, with an overnight stay in Anchorage. You'll then board a four-hour train journey up to Denali National Park, where you'll go um, um, on a hike and you'll have beautiful views of uh, the mountain Denali, formerly called Mount McKinley. Hopefully we'll see some grizzly bears, caribou and moose, but on another day we'll visit an Iditarod sled dog kennel to learn about the training and the work that the dogs do. From Denali, you'll then have a day-long journey traveling through some incredible wilderness, reaching Chitina, which is a small remote town. How remote, you ask? 126 people uh, tops is the population. From Chitina, you'll board a small prop plane about um, a half hour, bringing you to Wrangell St. Uh, Elias National Park, 
where you'll see 25 miles of glaciers as well as four 14 of the highest mountain peaks in all of North America. While there, we'll um, put some special shoes on you with steel spikes at the bottom to allow you to walk comfortably and safely on a two mile walk of one of the glaciers. Also in the area, we'll visit the town of Kennecott, uh, an old copper mining town, now a ghost town, but you can see the effects um, and of the, uh, of the mining um, that occurred over the past 100 years. We'll depart this area, take a prop plane back to Chitina, and then head over to the Nick Valley for a one night stay in a European lodge in some beautiful, beautiful uh, pristine wilderness. And then the next day, you'll travel for a few hours down to Seward, the coastal town. Um, we'll actually first stop in Anchorage, um, where you'll visit um, uh, an, basically an animal orphanage, where you can see uh, the conservation work that uh, the uh, center is doing to uh, rehabilitate some of these animals. But down in Seward, you'll go on a cruise of the Kenai Fjord district. Um, and then finally, you'll head back to Anchorage, where we'll do um, another stop at the Native American Center, learning about uh, 11 of the Native American tribes of the area. So all the flights are included within this itinerary. It's a really wonderful program. I mean, I know a lot of people do cruising to Alaska, but if you're looking for something a little different and you're looking to get to some more remote regions in Alaska, then this is the trip for you. The program is 6897 Air Inclusive. Next is a repeat trip that we offered a few years ago. Um, again, it's one of our longstanding trips called Machu Picchu to the Galapagos. We're taking two bucket list destinations, the ruins of Machu Picchu in Peru, as well as the iconic wildlife in the Galapagos Islands. The dates are August the 23rd through September the 7th. Um, it's a 16 day program. We limit the number of guests on this particular trip to 20 due to we were using private yachts while um, cruising the Galapagos, excuse me, but the trip begins in Lima, capital of Peru. You'll tour one of the museums housing pre-Columbian artifacts. From Lima, you'll board a short hour and a half flight up to Cusco and the Sacred Valley, acclimating to the high altitude at this point, but you'll be visiting indig indigenous Indian villages as well as touring um, some impressive Incan ruins even before you get to Machu Picchu. But then from there, you will board a Vista Dome train bound for the Machu Picchu Mountain. The train will let you off and then you take a bus um, that will take you up the Machu Picchu Mountain. You'll have two days of sightseeing at Machu Picchu. But the real highlight here, you'll be staying at the Belmond Sanctuary Lodge. It's the only hotel right next to the ruins of Machu Picchu. So the following morning, you can wake up for the sunrise over the Andes Mountains. You'll be the only one there with just the other hotel guests right before the day trippers arrive. So it's like having the park all to yourself. Leaving Machu Picchu, you'll board your train again bound for Cusco. It's about a two to three hour journey. Cusco is one of South America's oldest inhabited cities. You'll have lunch with the local family and we'll visit some other fortresses and Incan ruins. And then departing Cusco, you're bound um, or you're going to take a flight bound for Ecuador. You land in Quito, the capital of Ecuador. You'll have a couple of days of sightseeing there and you'll have an orientation about your Galapagos experience upcoming. You'll then take a flight from Quito over to Santa Cruz Island. And there you'll spend four nights in a beautiful Highlands resort overlooking the island. You'll have two full days of cruising on a private yacht. There will only be 20 of you on this boat, uh, traveling each day, visiting a few islands, taking in all the iconic wildlife, the giant tortoises, um, various bird life, uh, seals, and the land and marine iguanas, and so much more. Following your Galapagos experience, you'll fly back to Quito, a little bit more sightseeing. Quito actually sits on the equator, so you'll visit the monument and the spot where the northern and southern hemisphere actually meet. And then you'll fly home back to the States. So this exclusive journey is 8293 air inclusive. Second to last trip, discovering Eastern Europe, September 22 to October 7th, 16 days. We're featuring four countries, Poland, 
Hungary, Austria, and the Czech Republic. This is a great historical tour. It begins in uh, Poland's capital, Warsaw, for a two-night stay. You can see the old town pictured there on the top right. It was actually rebuilt um, after World War II. From Warsaw, you head down to Krakow with its old town still intact. Krakow is considered the cultural heart of Poland. While there, we'll have a moving day visiting the concentration camps of Auschwitz as well as Birkenau. And then on another day, we'll uh, visit uh, Wileska Salt Mines, which is an underground valley of chapels and monuments all carved out of salt. It's like an underground world. Departing from Poland, you head down into Budapest, the capital of Hungary, where you'll spend three nights. We'll have a balanced mix of guided sightseeing and leisure time. One of the days will be on your own to visit the city as you wish. On another day, we'll visit Dohani Synagogue, the largest synagogue in Europe. We'll also visit the Castle District and the Fisherman's Bastion. And then from there, you head west uh, into Vienna, Austria, the capital of Austria and the jewel of the Habsburg Empire. While in Vienna, you'll enjoy a musical performance, a classical musical performance, um, as well as you'll visit in, um, Schönbrunn Palace, which is considered the Versailles of Austria. You'll also have uh, leisure time in Vienna as well. From Vienna, you'll then continue heading northwest into Prague, capital of the Czech Republic. Prague is a really dramatic city. Um, you'll first start out with the Castle District, visiting St. Vitus Cathedral. We'll take you to see the astronomical clock picture there on the top left. And then we'll also take you to Wenceslas Square, um, site of the 1989 Velvet Revolution. We also have a, an optional post-tour extension to Berlin, Berlin on your own. And again, this trip um, is a great historical overview of these four countries and a great price point of $49.97 per person. And our last trip, probably one of my favorites, I've been to Egypt a couple of times and I'm looking forward to going back again sometime soon. Egypt and the Eternal Nile, October 28th through November the 11th, 15 days. You will see the pyramids and you'll spend ample time there. You'll experience the classic Nile cruise. However, what makes our tour special is that we've added a second cruise on Lake Nasser, and I'll get to that in a second. But the trip begins with a few days in Cairo, where you'll tour the ancient city of Memphis with the outdoor museum. Memphis is home to the first pharaoh of Egypt going back uh, 5,000 years. We'll also take you to the ancient necropolis of Saqqara and this um, step pyramid, the precursor to the pyramids of Giza. And then finally, you'll um, go on an extensive trip to the, see the pyramids of Giza and the Sphinx. Following Cairo, you'll take a two-hour flight down to Aswan, and then you'll board a three-hour motor coach down to the southern city of Abu Simbel, very close to the Sudan border. At Abu Simbel, you'll marvel, marvel at the four statues of Ramses II. All four of them are 45 feet high overlooking Lake Nasser. And I mentioned Lake Nasser. It's here that you'll board your cruise ship uh, for about three nights uh, to cruise along uh, Lake Nasser. Lake Nasser is a man-made lake created in the 1960s. Um, at the creation or during the creation of the Aswan Dam, Many of the um, many of the uh, temples of the area were going to be destroyed, so there was a, a huge uh, worldwide effort to save many of these temples. So uh, a man-made lake was created. The temples were raised, and now we have this lake to enjoy. Very few um, cruising ships are on Lake Nasser, so it's like stepping back in time when you're on this cruise ship, learning about Nubian history and as well as the temples. You disembark in Aswan. You'll enjoy a traditional felucca ride. It's like a fishing vessel, uh, a sailing boat fishing vessel. And then there you'll also board your Nile cruise ship for your classic um, cruise up the Nile for three nights. Um, you'll see Karnak, and uh, excuse me, you'll visit Karnak and Luxor temples. We'll also take you to the ancient necropolis of the Valley of the Kings and Queens. Um, and then finally, we'll fly you back to Cairo for a couple of nights to, uh, for some more sightseeing. And on this trip, we also offer a post-tour extension to Jordan to view uh, the uh, incredible uh, Petra um, a, a temple carved out of rock 2,000 years ago, as well as spending a couple of nights in the capital city of Amman. 
And one of the questions Lainey also took um, from one of the uh, guests, um, is Egypt safe to travel to? Is there any anti-American sentiment? We've been offering Egypt uh, for close to 20 years now. And in fact, before the pandemic hit, um, Iowa State had a sold out trip there in January of 2020. And uh, there were no issues. That's not to say that we don't monitor the situation there on a constant level. We have a great ground staff that always gives us updates. But at this time, there's no indication that there's um, any issues which would prevent us from operating the trip. If there were, and that has happened in the past, we would cancel the trip and refund the guests or rebook it to a future date. So um, rest assured, we're never going to, going to put anyone in harm's way. So um, that's it for 2022. But I did want to mention that ISU is actually offering Egypt in um, late November of this year, November 20. I don't have a slide of it, but it's November 29th to December uh, 13th. If you are interested in traveling later this year, uh, we will uh, hopefully be offering the trip. Uh, there um, are spaces still available if you're interested. Please contact Lainey or Shelley or call Odysseys and we can give you more information about the trip. The, the, the dates again are November 29th to December 13th. So obviously as we're coming hopefully out of the pandemic, uh, we're taking a very cautious approach. Um, we not only want our guests to be safe and secure and healthy on the trip, um, or I should say we want you to have an enjoyable and memorable uh, vacation, but we also want you to be safe and secure on the trip. So to that end, we will require all guests to be fully vaccinated in order to participate in an Odyssey's Unlimited trip. Um, additional requ entry requirements might be required by that government. We will be following CDC guidelines as well as guidelines of the country we're visiting. Um, right now, if a country is saying we need to use masks on a trip, uh, we will adhere to that protocol or take temperature checks. If they do not, then we will follow CDC guidelines, which at this time says that if you are fully vaccinated, masks are not required. But again, this is uh, changing on a daily basis. So we'll provide you with the most up-to-date information that we have after you book. Um, four months before the trip, we will send you more forms detailing uh, more information about uh, traveling in this age of COVID. And then a few days before your trip, we'll be conducting um, a health screening. Um, so as I said, the situation is changing on a daily basis and we'll do our best to provide you with the most up-to-date information to keep you um, safe and healthy on the trip. So that's all I had for 22. Um, if you have any questions, I know that um, Lainey is fielding those questions right now. I'd be happy to answer them. But thank you very much for your attention today. And we hope to see you on the road in 22. Thanks again. Perfect. Thank you, Vinny. Uh, it looks like the first one is, is there a way to travel with three in a group to mitigate the single traveler ad fee? Sure. No, we get that question a lot. Um, unfortunately, we don't offer um, a, 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 I'm sorry, we don't offer triple or quad accommodations. We only offer singles um, and doubles, uh, but we do our best uh, to keep the single supplement price um, down because we know, you know, it's it's an added expense, um, but it's just meant just so you can have your, your own room. But no, we don't have triples at this time. And I will give a quick plug that we do have um, what's called a solo traveler network with the traveling cyclones. And you can find that on our website at isualum.org slash travel um, that we can help pair you up with a future travel roommate if you're interested. Yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Yeah, we can certainly do a roommate share if you want to avoid the, uh, the single supplement. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then um, Susan asked, how long is the flight to Tanzania? Well, depending on which airline we use, uh, a lot of the times we might use uh, Delta Airlines. So from the East Coast uh, to Amsterdam, that's about seven hours. And then another seven hours, um, Amsterdam down to um, down to Tanzania. Um, so you'll connect in Amsterdam, probably have about two or three hour connection and then about another seven hours. But it all depends. I mean, we can use several different airlines. Um, so that's a good question. If you want to call um, the Odyssey's toll-free number, 888-370-6765, one of the travel counselors can give you an idea of the various airlines. We normally um, release the air schedule 75 days or two and a half months prior to departure, uh, but we do use a variety of carriers. Perfect. 
Great. And then um, on the Tanzania trip, are there any tent camping or do you stay at the lodges each night? Uh, you stay at the lodges each night and each lodge is unique um, to the area. Um, some of them, um, like for instance, in the Serengeti, um, the Serengeti uh, camp is you're staying in these these circular hovels and each guest has their own hovel. It, and it's a really, it's a large living space, but it's very unique. And some of them just have these incredible vistas um, overlooking the plains, um, but they all have pools common areas. Uh, they're really incredible lodges in the middle of this wilderness and you're enjoying these gourmet meals. So it's a really, it's a really incredible first class experience. That sounds wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, we had a couple of questions about the Portrait of Italy tour since it wasn't included in the slide deck. Yeah, the reason I did not include it uh, is because the trip is, is sold out. Um, I, I believe the start date is March the 29th. Um, if you'd like to be placed on a wait list, uh, we can certainly add your name to a, a wait list. And if anyone cancels off for whatever reason, we'd be happy to confirm you. Uh, but Portrait of Italy is a 16-day tour. It starts on the Amalfi Coast. It's uh, three nights there visiting Pompeii and doing an Amalfi cruise. You then go up to Rome three nights there. Then you go up to Umbria, the green heart of Italy, uh, stay in some medieval hilltop towns. And then uh, three nights up in Tuscany, you spend the three nights in a beautiful Tuscan villa, a family owned Tuscan villa. You almost have the whole villa to yourself. You visit places like Florence and Siena and the Chianti growing region. And then we end the trip in Venice. Um, uh, Iowa State normally offers this uh, once a year. If they don't offer it, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm sure we'll be offering it again with you in 2023 if you can't make it in 22. Yes, definitely. It is one of our more popular trips. So we Sells try to quick. offer it. Yeah. Um, and then it looks like Renee asked about Enchanting Ireland, how many people are usually on the trip? And I know this one is limited to 24, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. So it's a, a maximum of 24 guests. That's right but it can be as low as 12. Perfect. And then it looks like Edward said, is airfare inclusive from anywhere in the USA? Correct. It, it is. Um, thanks for the question, Edward. It's um, the prices that I quoted are from the lead in city. So for instance, from New Zealand, I quoted a cost of 6774. That's from either Los Angeles or San Francisco, but we can book you from Des Moines. We can book you from Cedar Rapids. We can book you from Kalamazoo, Boston, anywhere, you know, anywhere in the States. Just uh, when you get ready to make your reservation, let us know what city you'd like to fly from and we'll quote you the actual cost from that city. Sounds good. Um, that's all the questions I'm seeing. So I know that we have two $500 uh, vouchers for Odysseys to give away today. Yes, thank you very much, Lainey. Odyssey's provided a couple travel vouchers for us to give away. Uh, this is $500 towards a future Odyssey's trip. Uh, let's announce our first winner. Let's see here. First winner, Dr. Randall Elkin, uh, 65 and 71 in economics grad at Iowa State and also an annual member of the Alumni Association. Congratulations to Dr. Randall Elkin of Forest Lake, Minnesota. Great. We got one and more, then, I think, Lainey. Yes, we do. So the next one is going to Cynthia Martin of Marion, Iowa. She graduated in 72 in Spanish and is a life member of the Alumni Association. So I'll be sure to contact both of you after the event so you can claim your prize. Wonderful. Uh, Matt and Lainey, thank you so much for hosting this event. You did a great job. And uh, thanks again to the Traveling Cyclones. Thank you, Shelly. And uh, hope to see you all on the road in 22. Yes. Thanks, Vinny. Thanks. All right, great information. Care. Appreciate it. All right. That's Vinny Guarner from Odysseys. Great information. He's got some really great trips. Uh, and again, all of those are available to view at isulum.org slash travel. And again, those winners that we announced for those prizes, uh, we'll be in contact with you after the program today. Well, Lainey, we've just started to hear from some of our tour operators, and we want to know where you guys want to travel to next. Uh, we're going to be doing another giveaway here shortly, and we want to know, yeah, where do you want to travel to? We've heard from a couple tour operators and some really great, great options. We've got a couple more coming up here later in the day. But tell us where you want to travel to. It's been a long year. We haven't been able to travel. We haven't been able to get out. Um, and we want to know where you want to travel to next. We're going to be giving away a uh, prize pack. All you have to do is comment in the comment section on YouTube or Facebook, and we're going to randomly pick one of you guys to win a prize pack. 
Yes, wonderful. I know for me, really anywhere outside of Iowa sounds wonderful right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes, my wife is in Jamaica right now and I'm very jealous. She's sending me all these pictures from the beach <laughs> and uh, makes me wanna go uh, travel somewhere far away here this summer. Definitely. So we are going to move into our third tour operator of the day. And this is Vanessa Cheatham from Orbridge Destination Specialists. Orbridge partners with 140 alumni associations to provide the ultimate educational travel experience with a perfect, perfect combination of high-end properties, expert guides, lecturers, and personalized service. Our partnership with Orbridge started about the same time Vanessa joined the company in 2012. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today, Vanessa. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, really glad to be here talking about what we all love, travel. Thanks to uh, you, Lainey and Matt, and to Shelly for putting this great event together. Uh, I'm just gonna launch right in. I have about 15 minutes, so I'll move quickly and hopefully have time for questions at the end. Uh, we've been partnering with Iowa State for a decade to take cyclones to destinations all around the globe. Orbridge is based out of Seattle, Washington, and we're a small business of about 30 employees who all are as passionate about travel as I am. We work exclusively in the educational travel market with institutions like, Ohio, like Iowa State. Uh, we work with zoos, museums, um, and alumni associations. Our programs are crafted specifically for these types of special small group educational experiences. Our most important guiding principle at Orbridge is that our programs are beloved by guests. For us, that simply means that we focus on destinations that offer life-changing experiences that our guests will never forget. And we do this by utilizing customized accommodations like chartered small ships, privately owned family villas and iconic lodges. We um, specially craft excursions that are exclusive to your group of cyclones and we offer a deluxe experience at a value price. Some of the services that we provide include a guest service team that specializes in your program of choice. So they've seen what you're going to see and they've walked alongside your tour directors on your tour. They'll speak specifically to what you experience and they're experts in your destination. We have air agents at the ready to assist you with inquiries or with reserving your flights. We also offer a curated expedition library for guests who reserve by our early booking date. And that includes maps, field guides, uh, perhaps a coffee table book or relevant novel. And you'll receive this about six weeks ahead of your, uh, ahead of your departure with the intention of enhancing the educational content on the program. Our travel directors and expedition leaders get very high praise from our guests, and most of them have been with Orbridge for well over a decade. They're on staff with Orbridge rather than contracted for each individual trip, which is very unusual in our industry. We find that that, that, that protocol allows us to choose the most knowledgeable and dedicated tour directors. Um, an example of some of the tour directors that we have on staff are for our national parks programs. We've hired re retired parks rangers to lead your group. And you know, as you would guess, they offer a special insight into the experience and into the parks that they share with you. So it's on all of our minds. What does travel look like during or after COVID-19? So to that end, I thought I would share um, a very short few second video of a group uh, in the Southwest National Parks uh, this past year. And it, we've been operating successful trips uh, last fall and again this spring all over the United States and to the Galapagos Islands in South America, uh, adhering to full CDC protocol and guidelines. So I'll just quickly.
So as you can see, some of the ways that the safety protocol looks on the ground is that while we're on the tour, there are much smaller groups. Um, at this point, the CDC hadn't lifted mask, re or mask restrictions, so everyone wore masks. Uh, and obviously we'll base that on CDC protocol and, and whatever the in-country requirement is for the destination that we're visiting. Uh, it also looks like hotel rooms being request requested empty for 24 hours prior to our arrival, uh, outdoor lectures when possible, no buffet meals, uh, potentially new cleaning protocol and measures like special filters on ventilation systems on our ships and on our motor coaches. Those are just some of the many ways that we're uh, taking your safety, um, you know, placing the importance on your safety. And uh, to that end, we've established a website dedicated to wellness. It's orbridge.com backslash wellness. And each destination is listed there with specific protocol that is required in country and that Orbridge is asking our guests to adhere to. We also understand this is an ever-changing landscape. And so we want to remain responsive to our guest concerns. Because of this, we've implemented a risk-free cancellation policy. Up until 90 days prior to departure, your deposit is fully refundable. So now on to the fun stuff. Uh, we are offering three tours, three remaining tours in 2021 with Iowa State. You can see them there. But I'm going to talk to you a bit today about the four that we're offering in 2022. The first of which is the Canadian Rockies by rail. Uh, Shelly and her team have chosen the most beautiful time of year to travel through the Canadian Rockies. And on this program, which is in July of 2022, you will travel from Vancouver to Banff on board the Rocky Mountaineer uh, train. Upon arrival in Vancouver, you experience a panoramic city tour of Vancouver's you know, must-see sites, and you'll overnight at the lovely Vancouver Fairmont. Uh, the following morning, you board Rocky Mountaineers all domed fleet, and you'll be traveling through otherwise inaccessible terrain like British Columbia, Alberta, and the Rockies. You will travel over Fraser Canyon, through the spiral tunnels, which is always a thrill, and along the Continental Divide in gold leaf service on board the Mountaineer. Gold Leaf service on the train includes a bi-level coach with full-length panoramic windows, exclusive access to a private outdoor viewing platform, which allows for, as you would imagine, um, fantastic wildlife and scenery viewing, unlimited beverages and gourmet meals that feature all locally sourced ingredients. And in addition to your time on the train, you'll be immersed in the beauty of the Rockies in other ways as well, including uh, a gondola ride up Sulphur Mountain in Banff National Park, a visit to the thermal waters in nearby Banff Hot Springs, a visit to the ice fields, and so on. So you're off the train as well. At night, you'll disembark and you'll spend three nights in the Rockies at the Rimrock Resort, which has absolutely exceptional views, as well as a terrific Michelin-starred restaurant. So we're seeing an enormous interest in train travel over the last couple years, and anticipating that strong interest, Iowa State has a second rail program that we're partnering on that's quite different from the first. I feel like we can definitely find something for the train lover. And this is a once in a lifetime trip across the expanse of the five provinces from Toronto through the Rockies to the Pacific Northwest and Vancouver. This program is different than the Canadian Rockies program in that you experience the travel by rail uh, as you spend three full days and nights on board the deluxe via rail system. You really are unplugged from the outside world in this case. Inside the Canadian, you enjoy prestige class premium accommodations where amenities include first class art deco style cars, uh, dedicated butler service 24 hours a day, priority seating in the dining car and complimentary snacks and beverages, including all of your bar orders in the park car 24 hours a day. So if you want cookies and milk at two in the morning, it is our pleasure to get it for you. 
Throughout this journey, there will be brief stops in Kamloops, Jasper, and Edmonton, though most of your viewing in this case on this train trip will come from within the train and on either end of the journey, whenever you'll spend one night, again, in a Fairmont property in Toronto and in Vancouver. So Rockies, you're not sleeping on board the train. This Toronto to Vancouver by rail, you are sleeping on board the train. And I can answer more questions about that if you have them. So the next program, we're sticking with Canada with this theme to our nor to visit our northern neighbor. And we traveled to the Great Canadian North on this program, which is a remote tundra filled with glacial landforms, the boreal forest, and beautiful wilderness, accessible only by plane or boat. For a very short six week period in late August and September, Northern Manitoba is actually considered to be one of the best places in the world to view the Aurora Borealis. So we arrive into Port Winnipeg and we take a private chartered plane to our home for the week at Gangler Lodge. Gangler's is a supremely outfitted lodge that accommodates only about 25 people total in beautiful individual cabins. It's situated on a stretch of untouched water and wilderness, actually, which spans over 7,200 square miles. It features 12 river systems and 100 lakes, over 100 lakes. So it is truly an outdoor play playground. Your days are filled with wildlife spotting, uh, outdoor adventures like hiking, fly fishing, for which we do obtain license uh, and equipment for you, uh, kayaking, canoeing, if you're interested. The resident biologist from Ganglers also provides insight throughout your week into the local wildlife um, and the natural resources of the area. And our evenings feature delicious dinners prepared by the chefs at Ganglers, followed by opportunities to watch for the Northern Lights. And this is our uh, one program that's outside of Canada, Flavors of Northern Italy. And on this program, we venture into the culture, history, and cuisine of Northern Italy as you're immersed in Italian daily life on this very small group program of no more than 18 people. Our program begins and ends in Verona, Italy. And this is an unpack once experience. Uh, we use a charming villa as our base. I'll tell you a bit of, about that in a minute. And each day we spoke out like a bicycle wheel, as you can see on that map, uh, to explore the many towns nearby through exclusive excursions and through time with locals. Our friend Luca, uh, the owner of the villa, at which we make our home for the week has made us a video. And while I don't have time at this moment to share it, so sorry, um, we do have it on our Orbridge YouTube channel. So if you'd like to learn more about Luca and his passion for winemaking and olive oil production, you can find it on our YouTube. But very quickly, you'll get to try your hand at tortellini making during your visit. You'll visit the famed balcony in Romeo that inspired the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. You'll enjoy award-winning balsamic vinegar tasting by David. He took over the family business, which is over a century old from his grandfather. And, you know, just an example of one of the very intimate experiences on this type of program. You learn about his life and work. You spend the day with him and his family and then enjoy a beautiful meal prepared by his mother, who's a local chef. And this is the family-owned villa that I had mentioned, Borgia San Donino, which is on the Selva Capuzza Vineyard and Olive Oil Plantation just outside of Verona. Its rustic charm is comfortable and welcoming, um, and the wines that Luca produces are exceptional. You'll get to enjoy them all throughout your stay with a variety of tastings, and I can promise that you'll feel like family before you leave. Also, there is no single supplement on this program. I'm sorry, I don't remember if I mentioned that already, but no single supplement to join the flavors of Northern Italy. Very quickly, we're extending a special savings to you for joining the webinar today. And if you make a reservation, 
Remember, they're fully refundable for up until 90 days prior to departure. Um, if you make a reservation within the next month, you'll receive $125 off per person. Please just mention or note in your reservation the Iowa State Travel Preview when you're reserving. Thank you. Ready for questions. Hi, Vanessa. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So I was going to see, I don't think I've seen any come through in the chat at this point yet. Um, I know that we did have someone who was interested in Canada trips ahead of time, and you covered both of those that we're offering. Um, as well as you mentioned, the Flavors of Italy is uh, no single supplement. So that is exciting because we... Um, we love to have those trip options for single travelers and um, help them out with the cost a little bit. Absolutely. And those are always very, very popular. So um, yes, we are excited to see how that does. Perfect. And I know um, Matt had put up Renee's comment that she wants to travel to the Canadian Rockies. So hopefully she signs up for that trip while there is still space available. Terrific. It's a terrific experience. And the Rocky Mountaineer is just iconic, an iconic way to see the Rockies. Definitely. Um, it looks like John had a uh, question about the dates again. John, we will send that in the comments to you so that you have that um, to look at and keep. Okay, so I will see if any others come through. But in the meantime, um, I know that the, if the Italy trip sounded exciting to you, that you'll really enjoy this first prize that Orbridge is giving away. They are sending four bottles of wine yeah. from Newport on the flavors of Northern Italy trip to a lucky cyclone. So this is going to Teresa White of Macedonia, Ohio, and she graduated in 1988 in finance and is an annual member. Congratulations, Teresa. Terrific. I hope you enjoyed it, cool. Teresa. Very cool. Orbridge is also giving away a $500 travel voucher, good, through 2022. So congratulations to Jean Bestman of Ames, Iowa. Jean is a retired account specialist for ISU and an annual member of the association. Laney will be in touch with you both after the event. So congratulations to Teresa White of Macedonia, Ohio, and Jean Bestman of Ames, Iowa for winning these great uh, vouchers courtesy of Orbridge. So thank you, Vanessa, for offering those out to our, uh, our loyal travelers here at the association. It's our pleasure. Thank you. And thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate it. It's great to be here. I can't wait to see cyclones in 2021 and 2022. I'm ready to get back out there. We are awesome. too. Thanks so much, thanks. Vanessa. Thanks, Vanessa. Man, I, that, the train trip really looks cool. I remember when we promoted that a, a while back, just how excited I was for that one. That's a really exciting trip for, for our travelers. And I know a lot of people were commenting there that they were excited to see that one uh, come up as well. So Definitely. very cool. I think we're ready to bring on our next tour operator. You wanna introduce him? Sure. So we have Keith Mills, uh, Vice President of Business Development at Premier World Discovery. Keith has been in the group travel industry for over 30 years and has been at Premier for over 19 of them. He's well versed in the alumni industry and is one of Premier's pioneers working with some Big Ten schools before their national progress occurred. So we've been offering Premier trips just over the past four years to mostly domestic locations. And we're going to continue that into 2022. Thanks for joining us today, Keith. Thank, thank you, Lenny. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you great. And you can see me, all right? Yeah. Is my screen up on yours? We will get it up. There you go. Can you see it there? My mine is up. Yep. So you got the uh, the cycle preview page. Yes, we can see it. All righty. Well, thank you for hosting and um, arranging all this. the The technical part always makes me nervous. I never even heard of Zoom a, a year ago. Now we've got all these different formats. Uh, so hopefully it's all working. And I'm going to do a whirlwind trip uh, here. We've got four tours that I'm going to talk about in 15 minutes. So uh, I'm going to be rambling quite a bit, but showing you a lot of pictures and hopefully giving people the highlights that may excite them to uh, join us in 2022. Um, the four trips we have are all very different, but all in the U.S. and two are ones in Canada. They're all one and two hotel tours. 
the hub and spoke concept has been very popular the last few years. And that's been our focus working with a lot of the alumni groups. They're a little shorter, a little closer to home, and they don't move so much uh, from hotel to hotel. Uh, Premier is based out Redondo Beach, California. Um, as Lainey mentioned, I've been with the company for 19 years, uh, pretty much traveled all over the world. So it's always exciting uh, to talk about different tours and talk a little about our company. We're members of all major uh, travel organizations in the US. Uh, the most significant for you as the traveler is USTOA. We have a $1 million bond uh, traveler assistant program uh, in case anything were to happen to us. Uh, you are covered uh, for the money that you've deposited and paid to us. We have about 80 worldwide itineraries, uh, primarily focusing on US-based trips, but we do trips also out of the, uh, the US and Europe and uh, Asia. Our hotels are typically four-star hotels uh, selected for their location. Uh, and again, I'll show you some of the hotels as we go through the tour. Uh, our tour directors are based in many of these areas and they work for us uh, throughout the year leading our tours. Um, we have modern motor coaches, laboratory equipped. Uh, we often use trains as part of our transportation between areas, and you'll see some of the train trips here in a second. Uh, everything is primarily inclusive. There are very few options that we sell, and um, again, I'll show you those as we get to the tour. Uh, daily breakfast is included at all the hotels. Usually order off the menu or a buffet-style breakfast will be available, and we do take very careful care of your suitcases during the trip. And it is one of the convenience. I know you may be, hopefully you're laughing at this picture. Um, this is actually a sculpture in the Sacramento airport, but it's a reminder when you go on tour, it is nice to have your bags uh, taken from the bus to the hotel and vice versa and uh, picked up uh, in each place that you go to. So the first trip we're gonna talk about, we've done this before with uh, Iowa State is the Great Trains and Grand Canyons tour. It spends all five nights in beautiful Sedona. This trip is going in March of 2022. Uh, this may be our scene as we uh, look to the future in the winter. Uh, I'm in Chicago, so you know what the winters are like uh, here. And this is a great winter getaway. Sedona in March, uh, the weather is typically in the, in the 70s. Uh, the elevation is about 4,500 feet in Sedona. So it does cool off in the evening. If you do go on this trip, you need to bring along a jacket. And uh, we fly into Phoenix. Uh, and we will drive, it's about an hour and a half drive from Phoenix up to Sedona. Beautiful drive heading up into Red Rock country as they call it. You may see some of the saguaro cactus along the side of the road. And then we arrive into Sedona, typically mid to late afternoon uh, on the Sunday. This trip does leave on a Sunday. Um, we stay at the Hilton Sedona, beautiful hotel. It's a resort style hotel just outside of town. And if you've not been to Sedona before, it's noted for obviously beautiful Red Rocks, but all the buildings in Sedona can be no higher than three stories and they have to be an Adobe style architecture. So they all blend into their surroundings. Uh, this is typical of the rooms. All the rooms have fireplaces and balconies. Uh, there's two swimming pools here at the resort, as I mentioned during the day, it should be in the seventies, even possibly in the eighties late in March. We have a welcome dinner that first night and then we'll head out on tour. That's actually Shelly there right? getting on our trolley. We'll do a Sedona trolley tour. Uh, this is the namesake of the town, Sedona, the Sedona Schneebly. Uh, they, the family, the Schneebly family lived here uh, around the turn of the last century and they named it after um, Sedona. Um, this is the church of the Holy Cross up in the, uh, built into the rocks. You get beautiful views of Sedona and surroundings. And this is all part of our trolley tour. Uh, they call this Cathedral Rock. And again, I'm flashing through a lot of pictures, uh, Bell Rock. Uh, is where one of the um, vortexes is said to be at the top of Bell Rock. The only McDonald's in the world that does not have golden arches, they would not allow it in Sedona. I thought it was kind of funny that um, um, this is the only place in the world you'll see the turquoise uh, arches. Uh, we are gonna take the train up to the Grand Canyon, it's the Grand Canyon Railway, and we will spend the day up at the Grand Canyon. If not been before, it's something that should be on your bucket list. It's about 10 miles across from the, we're at the South Rim, looking across to the North Rim. Uh, we'll spend the day up there at uh, Grand Canyon. Uh, after we get off the train, the motor coach will meet us. We'll drive around to several vantage points along the canyon before we head back home and have dinner. Montezuma Castle National Monument. These are Indian cliff dwellings that we will stop at. Uh, you, not ones that you go up into, but there'll be a little history there of the Sanagua Indian tribe that lived here back around 600 AD. 
Uh, next stop is the old ghost town, but the rejuvenated town of Jerome, Arizona. The Hotel Connor there, you can see it was built in 1898. And we'll have some time to wander around Jerome before we board the Verde Canyon Railroad. Verde Canyon is, uh, goes through, the, the train goes through this along the Verde River, through beautiful canyon country, through several tunnels over several trestles. There's open air cars. The train only goes 10 miles an hour, so it's a sit back, relax, four hour ride. We turn around and head back uh, to Sedona the next day. This is the only option on the tour. This is the pink Jeep rides. If you've done this a little bumpy, we don't include it. It's uh, off-road driving, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, this is on your free day, which is on Thursday. If you like something a little more quiet, there's a beautiful golf course uh, adjoining the hotel here um, at the Hilton. Uh, we finish off our farewell dinner that night, uh, the Blazing M Ranch. It's kind of a long picnic tables and cowboy style dinner with tin plates and tin cups and a little bit of cowboy entertainment go along with that. I gotta catch my breath. That's trip number one. Uh, Utah's Mighty National Parks is another, um, just a two hotel kind of hub and spoke. We'll fly into Grand Junction. We'll take about uh, an hour and a half drive down to Moab and that'll be our base for the remainder of the trip. So we fly in and out of Grand Junction on this. This is the town of Grand Junction will be our jumping off point before we head uh, down to Moab. We stay at the Doubletree Grand Junction. Uh, 10 meals are included on this tour. And there's just a shot there. So this is our welcome dinner. We'll be in Grand Junction. Breakfast daily at the hotel. This is along Highway 22. This is a scenic route. And uh, again, beautiful uh, Red Rock country up in uh, Utah as well. We'll stop at the Colorado National Monument. And again, further drive along there as we head into Moab. Moab is a small resort town nestled in the mountains. Again, very, very popular during the summertime. Um, this trip is going in early June. And again, the weather should be in the 70s and 80s this time of year. It gets a little hot in the midsummer. Uh, we're staying at a Hyatt place uh, in Moab. And if you've stayed at Hyatt places, very nice. Uh, they're, they're very large, spacious rooms, usually with a little divider uh, with the um, sitting area and bedroom separate. This is the lobby at the Hyatt Place, a couple nice, there's a hot tub in the pool there. And again, this is a resort style uh, trip where you're staying out um, in Moab and it's not a dressy tour, not lots of walking. We'll be driving in and out of many of these parks. And this is a typical room at the Hyatt Place. We'll do a river cruise on the Colorado River. We'll also go into Canyonlands National Park on day three. See some of the beautiful rock formations. This is a very scenic trip. And some of the parks maybe that people haven't gotten to is kind of the, the reason we brought this trip back. We had it a few years ago and then uh, we didn't run it for a few years. And it's been a big seller for us already this year. Uh, as most of you know, travel is coming back right now. Uh, we've been booming with reservations for the last month or so after having none for almost a year or so. It's kind of good to get to see people travel again. Um, I've got a group out in California here from the Chicago area. One just came back from Nashville. Dead Horse State Park is on our list uh, for a stop. This is again a trip where it's nice. You sit back, relax, take pictures. It's a very relaxing trip again, unpacking really just once and staying in the hotel. Um, a little bit of a drive from Moab, but going down to Monument Valley. This was the home of John Ford. Uh, and all his westerns back in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. There he is with John Wayne. I think this is Fort Apache, but uh, they filmed a lot of the famous movie. Stagecoach was filmed out here as well. And this scene may look a little more familiar if you saw Forrest Gump recently, um, back, that was about well, 15 years ago, I think. Uh, Forrest runs through Monument Valley. This is where he stops and decides to turn around and go home. Uh, Golding's Lodge. Uh, we'll stop here for lunch, and this will be our jumping off point for a, a, a tour, a back roads tour again. But this is a resort, a little resort out in the middle of nowhere. We stop here for lunch. There's a movie museum here as well, and learn a little about the history. And then we'll jump on our, our tour from Goldings and see some of the great rock formations in Monument Valley. This is all a Navajo uh, reservation land, so it's not a national park, and we'll have uh, Navajo guides the two rock formations on the left are called the mittens. If you kind of look, there's a right and a left mitten and uh, Mermaid Butte is on the right side. There's a close up of the uh, one of the mittens. We stop here for pictures. So again, the tour is fairly easy as far as walking 
there's our Navajo guide that we had uh, on our uh, on our truck ride through the uh, the valley. Great shot for a uh, group here. John Ford filmed a couple of his famous scenes here on the rock. You can actually have uh, a picture taken with that horse. I think it costs like fifteen dollars. Uh, you can go out there and have your picture taken. So some of the beautiful scenery in Utah. This usually happens to me by the end of the tour. And then we'll have a free day in Moab to kind of wander around, uh, do some shopping, relax at the hotel before we head on day six to Arches National Park. Over 2,000 natural uh, arches here, the most anywhere in the world. And again, we'll spend a day touring arches. We finish up with some wine tasting and a cookout at the Red Cliffs Lodge. And I know I'm going fast here. I got two other quick tours to show you. This is the movie museum also at the Red Cliffs Lodge. And then we'll have our farewell dinner and cookout that night. So a lot of fun, great tour. And again, um, another one out west. Uh, this one and now is going to Maine on the other side of the country. This is going in October. So you should see some fall colors here. And this is a new tour we came out with this year. Again, it's been very popular. It's primarily a one hotel tour. We will fly in and out of Boston. Uh, when I finish up, we'll talk a little about airfare and how we book that airfare for you. So we'll do a tour, a city tour of Boston. Um, obviously see the, the Freedom Trail, Old South Meeting House, it's Beacon Street. Uh, something we added in uh, is a tour of Fenway Park. Uh, there's a lot of baseball fans out there and we will do a tour of Fenway, one of the more famous parks in the country right next to if you're a Cubs fan right after Wrigley Field, in my opinion. Uh, we'll stop at Finale Hall and Quincy Market. And then we will drive a short drive up about an hour from Boston up to Portsmouth. We'll do a little tour of Portsmouth. This is a quaint little fishing village right along the ocean. And then the Madame Resort is our home for the next five nights. This is a waterfront resort, um, award-winning waterfront resort. And we'll be spending all five nights here. So again, you can unpack and put some things in the drawers. This is the lobby here. Again, very typical, and very quaint of a New England, old New England resort. Uh, lots of great views. And again, it is along the water as well. Maybe go out in one of those chairs and relax one afternoon. Um, lots of great shopping on this trip. We're gonna make a number of picture stops. There's a couple cruises on here. This is gonna be a Portland Harbor cruise. You can see some of the fall colors coming in there and there's all kinds of beautiful lighthouses. We'll stop and take pictures and we'll also visit a couple of those. This is the old Port Historic District in Portland. Again, we'll have some free time here to wander around. I'm going to click through some of these. There's a trolley and um, um, bus uh, museum that we stop at for about an hour. Some of the old trolleys that you used to have in New England. And then uh, some of the beautiful coastline. This is the Bush compound at Kenny Bunkport. Close up there. We're also gonna go out for a lobster cruise and they're gonna do a lobster fishing demonstration, how they catch the lobsters. And uh, again, a lot of fun. And we are gonna finish up uh, in a second here with a lobster dinner as well. Hopefully everybody's had um, lunch already today. So again, a lot of fun on this trip, very active. There's no options that we sell. Everything you're seeing is included. Uh, we'll also drive up for one day going up into New Hampshire. Again, going in October, the first week, you should see a lot of fall colors up in beautiful North Conway. Again, small resort town. Uh, we're gonna do the Conway Scenic Railway here, going through some of the beautiful fall foliage colors. And uh, this is about an hour and a half train ride. One of the wooden bridges that you'll see. So again, Another very active trip. This is a maple syrup store uh, that we stop at, and then we'll have our farewell dinner that evening back in um, back in Maine. Last but not least, uh, and again, I know I'm going quickly, but hopefully giving everybody a taste of the trips that we're offering next year. This is uh, Montreal and Quebec Christmas markets. Uh, this is a two hotel tour. We'll have two nights in uh, Montreal and two nights in Quebec City. Uh, both hotels are Fairmont properties, world-renowned hotels. This is the Queen Elizabeth Hotel. Um, a lot of history here, a beautiful five-star hotel. Uh, this is where John Lennon and Yoko Ono wrote Imagine in one of the rooms here. And uh, we'll be spending two nights here as we tour Montreal. And again, one of the highlights here, of course, will be going to the, this is the Notre Dame Cathedral. 
very reminiscent of some of the beautiful European churches, St. Joseph's Oratory. So we'll do a full motor coach trip of uh, Montreal. If you've not been before, it's a beautiful city. It's McGill University here. It's the Cartier uh, Bridge there in the background. Uh, this is the, called the Montreal Underground. It's a huge complex of over 2,000 hotels, uh, or 2,000 restaurants, stores, and even hotels that connect to this all underground. Some of the decorated streets in old Montreal. And then this is going out to the Montreal Christmas market. Again, very reminiscent of the Christmas markets in Europe. And you'll have some uh, late afternoon, early evening time there. We will take the Via Rail train from Montreal to Quebec. It's about a two and a half hour ride uh, up to Quebec City. And then again, the second world famous hotel. This is the Chateau Frontenac. This is where we'll be staying for two nights. Go back a beautiful, very, very European cities, very much like visiting France. This is part of the walled city here. It's the only walled city in North America. These are what the streets look like. And there's the Chateau Frontenac in the background, our hotel, but uh, old, old, very old world style uh, um, streets and things in old Quebec. Montmorency Falls, it's the highest falls in North America. This is the Citadel, the fortress that sits overlooking the city of Quebec. And then we'll visit the second Christmas markets in Quebec City as well um, for some shopping and Christmas ornaments, things like that. And they'll have glue vine and music and things very much like you would see in Europe. And we return home. So you've got a little tour there of the whole country. And again, thank you for listening in. I have no idea how much time I took, but I was trying to go as fast as I could, Lainey. Everybody a, a quick, quick glimpse of what we're going to be doing next year. Definitely. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, I know we did have one question from Mary Ann about the size of a typical premier tour. And is it exclusive to the uh, Iowa State Alumni Association? So our typical group sizes are 44. Again, uh, right now we're running slightly smaller numbers, uh, you know, as we come out of the pandemic, but um, we would max out at 44. What we've been doing over the last few years, the, the group will not be an exclusive to Iowa State Cyclones, but we are you are booked with other alumni associations on this trip. We work with a lot of different types of organizations, but for the uh, alumni groups, we make those exclusive. Again, we don't know the numbers, you know, when we book these, how many you're gonna get. I think typically in the past, we've gotten 15 to 30 people from, from Iowa State. Maybe that's gonna grow hopefully in the next year. Um, but that um, it's not exclusive to Iowa State at this time. Definitely. That was the only question I saw right now. And since we're running a little bit behind schedule, um, yep. you did have uh, two $100 gift certificates to give away, correct? Yes. Perfect. So I pulled those winners from our pre-registrations. And the first one is going to Robert Milroy of Palm Harbor, Florida. He is a 74 and 80 graduate in economics and a life member at the Alumni Association. And our second winner is John of Plano, Texas, and he's a 76 computer science graduate and also a life member. So congratulations to Robert and John, and I will be in touch with you after the event to get your prizes. Yeah. One, last, one last thing, Lainey, uh, I can mention to people that do book, uh, we are offering, if you do the air through Premier and you pay by check, you get $200 off per person. If you would book it as a land only, they would get $100 per person. And as somebody mentioned in their prior presentation, we can do air from anywhere in the United States to join this tour. They don't need to fly through any certain gateway. Um, so wherever they're from, they just need to let uh, the Alumni Association know where they want to fly from. Uh, I think we gave you prices from both Des Moines and Chicago, but you can fly from anywhere to join the tour, um, whether it's in Sedona or out, out east. Perfect, and that's great to know because we do get that question quite a bit. Yep, and if there's further questions, you know, they can email you later and you and I are in touch quite often so we can get back to people with questions or answer questions as well. Yeah, okay. thank, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Keith. So we are going to move on to our last presentation for the day, and it is from USI Travel Insurance Services. And they're here to answer all of your questions about COVID-19 and having the coverage you need while you're planning your next trip. So 
So I want to thank USI for their continued partnership and support of the Traveling Cyclones program as they're a sponsor of this event. First, you'll hear from Angel Ramos, and he has been with USI since 2016 and has over three decades of travel industry experience from sales to customer service. Then joining us for the Q&A at the end, we also have Myron Tate, who is the Director of Travel Customer Service and Operations. And we have been partners with USI for over 16 years. So now I'll pass it over to Angel to give an overview of USI and answer some frequently asked questions. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angel Ramos. I am an account manager for Iowa State University, Alumni University, and I work for USI Travel Insurance Services. So I'll start to give you a brief background about our company so you know who we are. So we've been established since 1973, headquartered in Newtown Square, Pennsylvania, just 30 minutes away from the city of Philadelphia. We're a national insurance agency and brokerage providing travel insurance solutions for individuals, groups, organizations, and businesses worldwide. Forbes has ranked us as third top travel insurance provider in the nation and the only one to be an insurance broker. We're a leader in the alumni insurance affinity market, and we're proud to serve the alumni and friends of the Iowa State University Traveling Cyclones. So before I get into the coverage specifics for our plan, I must pause for a moment to share the disclaimer. It is a reminder that the most complete and accurate plan language is found in the plan documents, which can be found at my.travelinsure.com forward slash traveling owls. Now we can proceed with some more specifics. Now here are the main coverage reasons included in the trip cancellation benefits we offer to the alumni travelers. Please note that our plan includes three different levels, so you can choose the plan level that meets your coverage needs and budget. I'm not going to mention every description, but the detailed description information is pulled directly from the plan document, and we always recommend that our customers read the full plan document to fully understand their coverage. So let's say something does happen on your trip and you need assistance. Every one of our plans includes something called Worldwide Assistance Services. You contact them through a toll-free number 24 hours a day, and they will give you the answers you need or connect you with a resource that can help. Say you experience a travel delay on your tour to Italy or missed your train. Call the toll-free number and they will work with you to make alternate arrangements to keep your trip moving. Or say you become ill while, while away from home and need to see a doctor. They can assist you with finding a doctor and any other questions you may have. They have a concierge service too. So if you want recommendations for great restaurants in your area or you just want flowers delivered, give them a call. One benefit that you may or may not have heard of is cancel for any reason, better known as CFAR. We're seeing more demand for this upgrade as there is a lot of uncertainty in the world in the past year. So I want to make a few, take a few moments to focus on it and explain it to you. So as I mentioned, CFAR is, stands for cancel for any reason, and it is an upgrade available on certain plans if you meet the requirements. So why should you have the plan why should you upgrade your plan to CFAR? So having CFAR benefit does give you the utmost flexibility and financial security for your trip. The benefit allows you to cancel your trip for literally any reason at all and still be reimbursed for up to 75% of your prepaid non-refundable trip expenses. Still note that without CFAR, your plan still, cover, still includes the trip cancellation benefit but you can only be reimbursed for that benefit if your reason for canceling your trip falls under one of the reasons specified in your plan. So recently, many travelers were surprised to see that most trip cancellations due to COVID-19 were not covered by their insurance, as pandemics are generally not covered by travel insurance. This is the case for almost all travel insurance carriers and plans, but travelers with CFAR did indeed have coverage. So let's talk about um, some specifics you need to know to get and use the Z4 coverage. So as I mentioned, it is an upgrade when you're making, when you're purchasing your plan. Plans that do cover 
is the plus or the elite plan with which mean needs to be purchased within 21 days from your initial deposit date you must ensure all prepaid non-refundable trip costs if you increase your trip costs later on you must then adjust your plan accordingly within the 21 days of making those additional arrangements in order to maintain your coverage making a cfar claim is pretty easy first you have to cancel with your travel organizer at least two days before your scheduled departure to be eligible to make a CFAR claim. Then contact USI Travel Insurance Services or the Plan Claims Administrator to file the claim. A benefit that's unique to this plan is an upgrade that goes along with CFAR, and it's called as originally, as you can see, IFAR which means interruption for any reason. And just like a CFAR, IFAR has the same benefits. It gives you the utmost flexibility and financial security for your trip. This benefit allows you to stop or interrupt your trip after it has started for literally any reason at all and still reimburse you up to 75% of your unused, prepaid and non-refundable trip expenses. So how do you get it? CFAR coverage is included when you purchase this IFAR coverage is included when you purchase the CFAR coverage. As long as you do it within the 21 days from your initial deposit. Now this slide is important because as with many travel insurance plans from any company, there are certain benefits that are only available if you choose the plan shortly after you make your initial trip deposit. These include the following. It's cancel for any reason and interruption for any reason. As I mentioned, it does have an additional cost. The pre-existing medical condition exclusions waiver. So the exclusion for pre-existing conditions for medical coverage can be waived for certain plan levels if you meet the early purchase requirements. And the financial default. So if your travel supplier goes into bankruptcy or financial default and can't provide the service you booked, you can, re you can be reimbursed for expenses you pay. Purchase for this, purchase the plus or elite plan within your 21 days of making your initial trip payment to be eligible for these benefits. So as you can imagine, last March, we've been getting a lot of questions about the COVID pandemic and what travel insurance may or may not cover. There are a lot of nuances to this, but I'll address a few of the most common questions here. So what if you or a family member gets sick with COVID before your trip? Will you have coverage? Well, trip cancellation and interruption coverage may apply in the instance that COVID will be treated like any other sickness. Medi emergency medical coverage and emergency medical evacuation coverage would also apply if you became sick with COVID while on your trip. Please note COVID is treated like any other sickness when it comes to the pre-existing conditions exclusion. So purchase your plan order to be eligible for the pre-existing condition exclusion waiver. Second ask is what if COVID prevents you from traveling somewhere on your trip? For example, when Hawaii was requiring to quarantine for 14 days upon arrival, could you cancel and use your travel insurance to get a refund? The answer there is yes. If the destination to which you are traveling is requiring travelers similarly situated to you to be quarantined for a period of time upon entry, you may be eligible for trip cancellation coverage, provided that the quarantine that you would face is in effect within 14 days of your scheduled departure date. You must cancel your trip during this 14-day period prior to your scheduled departure date. Please note, as always, claims must be reviewed on an individual basis to ensure eligibility. And what if there's a new wave of COVID infections and you're worried about traveling? Will travel insurance cover your trip? Unfortunately, no. Travel insurance does not cover the field of traveling. You would need to have CFAR for coverage in this situation. And since I can't answer every question or address every scenario here, I will I do want to point out to you our coronavirus coverage resource page on the website. You'll see the URL here on the slide. Or you can simply visit travelinsure.com and you'll see a feature box on the home page that will take you to this page. You can also feel free to contact our customer service team if you have any specific coverage questions. So this slide shows what the select website homepage looks like. From this site, in addition to getting a quote and buying your plan, 
You can view the policies, see the plan details, and get answers to plan FAQs. You can also start a claim. I do want to bring your attention to the field that says initial deposit date located on the get a quote now box. This is very important because it determines whether or not you are eligible for the early purchase advantages I discussed on previous slides. Otherwise, the quote process is straightforward. If you want to include several people on your policy, you can add multiple travelers to the quote as long as all of you live in the same state. We also encourage you to call our customer service team and speak with one of our licensed representatives. They can answer any questions you have, provide quotes, and handle your enrollment by phone. I invite you to visit the website. Again, it is my.travelinsure.com forward slash ISUAA. If there's any questions, you can feel free to visit our site at my.travelinsure.com at ISUAA or you can contact the toll-free number at 800-937-1387. Our hours are Mondays through Fridays from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, Angel. And it looks like we do have quite a few questions popping in the chat. So, so uh, uh, Angel and Myron, I'll let you decide who wants to answer. The first one is, can the level of USI insurance coverage be upgraded after initial, initial purchase? If the, if the question is more going towards the tier from like basic plus to elite, it, they cannot upgrade to a different tier once they purchase the plan. Okay, perfect. And then... The next one is from John and it says, can a person purchase travel insurance through USI for travel packages that are not part of the ISU Alumni Association travel packages? Yes, and the answer to that is yes. They can either do it on the same website as they have with um, Iowa State or they can let the representative know so they can do it through Iowa State. And John, feel free to pass pass that information along as well to family and friends, whoever's traveling too. So um, we have packages for um, for those travelers as well. Perfect. And then Peggy had a question on if you didn't select the travel insurance within 21 days of deposit, can you still get any type of travel insurance? Yes. Yes, you can. You will get any um, of the plans, uh, any of the tiers you want to select, and you have up to 24 hours of your departure date to purchase the policy. You just, um, and just, just to add to that, you just wouldn't be eligible for the early purchase um, uh, advantages, and that would be the eligibility for the cancel for any reason and um, interruption for any reason, as well as the pre-existing condition waiver. So um, it really benefits everyone to, to um, purchase within the tw first 21 days of your deposit um, because you're eligible for some additional benefits um, you know, if you're interested in that. But yes, you can purchase up to, to, to Angel's point, 24 hours uh, before your trip. Wonderful. I'm not seeing any other questions come through the chat right now, but if we have more, um, I know I can be in contact with both of you and we'll reach out with any questions we can't answer. So um, thank you so much for joining thank us today, you, Myron. And we right. will see you on Thursday with the same presentation, but any additional questions we may have from new viewers or the same viewers who have thought of something else. Yep, sure. that's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome, really great information there from those two. All right, well, we have one last prize to give away for those who commented where they'd like to take their adventure next. So um, I do want to put a few of those up, though. We had some really great responses. Iceland, somebody wants to go to Iceland, Antarctica. All right, Antarctica. Uh, the Canadian Rockies rail trip. That was, I think that was my, one of my favorites as well. That looks like a great trip. Uh, the Canadian train tour, Germany Christmas markets. I know some of our staff have been on that trip as well. So um, really great to see where everybody wants to, to head to uh, in this next year to come. All right, let's go ahead and select our next winner for the ISU travel prize pack. John Kinley was our first winner. So we'll do one more. We had 44 people. Uh, comment here with us today. So thanks for everyone who participated. So let's go ahead and draw for our second winner. Lots of names popping up, lots of fun, yeah. friendly faces popping up. 
Susan Klein as our second winner. Congratulations, Wonderful. Susan. Lainey will be in touch with you about receiving your prize as well. And before we go, I know we have Shelly that's joined us. Hi, Shelly. Hi, everyone. How are you? We're great. <laughs> all right. Wow. What did you think about all of the uh, the options that people the the tour operators presented today? Where where did you, where was your favorite? Where do you want to go to in twenty twenty? Well, I I'd love to go anywhere. Anywhere out of the state would be great. And I'm seeing yes. a lot of the choices or places that people want to go. And I'm thinking to myself, we're going there. Oh, we have a trip there. We're going to go to yes. Antarctica in 2023. So um, we'll be able to take you where you want to go. Definitely. Yeah, there, I love the diversity of the trips. There's something for everybody here. If you want to travel by sea, by air, by train, uh, there's a little bit of everything. So some great options. I, I completely agree. All right. Well, I'm going to end our um, show today. I want to give a great shout out to Lainey for putting this together and Matt for helping us. And then behind the scenes, we have Katie. Um, I know that all of you put so much work into this and I appreciate it. And a huge shout out to all of you who are tuning in to our 22, 2022 virtual travel preview event. Today's event has been recorded and it will be available through the same link on the ISU Alumni Association's YouTube channel. Thank you to our two operators for taking the time out of their day to share some fun upcoming trips with everyone that we are so excited to experience. And thank you too to our sponsors, Green Hills Retirement Community and USI Travel Insurance Services. If you have Facebook, please join our Traveling Cyclones group where you can share pictures and stories or your travels and hear about some of our upcoming trips and events first. So you can visit Facebook and look for us there. And you can also check out our website at www.isualum.org backslash travel to request trip brochures and find your next adventure. We hope to see you back online on Thursday at 1 p.m. Central Time. A new link will be sent to those who registered uh, tomorrow. Have a great evening and go Cyclones. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.